Finding good quality medieval reenactment equipment can be really hard these days. There aren't a whole lot of shops in Australia and buying online can be so hit and miss. I know from personal experience how tempting it can be to go for cheaper stuff and sometimes you get very disappointed with the product. G'day guys, my name is Ben from Medieval Mayhem. On this channel we do lots of reviews into equipment, we do lots of DIY videos into costuming and furniture and equipment. We also look at the religion and the politics and the battles of the time. So if you're new here, you might like to consider subscribing. Alrighty guys, today we're going to do a review of the medieval shop Haskal's Axe. That's this one right here. I really like this axe. Uh, Alrighty guys, so today we're going to look at the medieval shop Old Norse Axe. That's this one right here. Um, I really do like this axe. Um, this is something that's depicted quite clearly in much of the uh, Dark Ages iconography. You can see this in uh, lots of portraits and it is fairly well described. This is an axe that has a very utilitarian kind of function. I believe something like this would have been very easy to produce. Would have been made from something like bog iron. And this is something that would have been very common. I, I, my personal belief is that many people would have carried something like this. So with the, um, the so-called Viking raids throughout the English and French coastlines and so on, people started to uh, prepare themselves so much better to resist this kind of uh, raid and people carried this on them. This is something that could be used for not just cutting wood but just in general uh, much like a, a very sort of utilitarian camp axe but also a fighting axe. The weight distribution makes this very suitable for throwing although I don't necessarily believe that much in, in throwing axes. Um, however Let's, uh, let's take a look at this, this item. Okay, the weight is 1.064 kilos. I'm not sure what that is in pounds. If you know, please leave a, a note in the description below. And the length of the haft is 51 centimeters. What I really like about the handle of this axe is that it is a much of an oval shape. Let's take a bit of a look, look at that. Alrighty, so you can see there very clearly a really nice oval shape. This gives you a lot of feedback as to where your hand is in relation to the blade and it makes it so easy to use and therefore is actually quite safe. One point I don't like about this particular axe is that this is actually not a very good fitting and you can see with just a little bit of force my hand can take the uh, the head off the haft. I don't think that's very safe. I come from um, a work background in health and safety and um, uh, an axe where you can do that, not such a good idea. The axe head itself is 16.5 centimeters. I think that is roughly uh, six inches or seven inches. Please correct me if I'm wrong. I, I don't know the imperial measurements so well anymore. And it costs $61.50. That's uh, not including postage. So I'm going to leave a link in the description below and you can check this out. Um, okay, guys, I, I, I think this is realistically an 8 out of 10. I actually bought a, a bunch of these different axes and my kids all take one when we're doing medieval events and, uh, and so on. Um, that's just the way I believe it would have been and that way uh, kids not only can contribute to the household in terms of uh, butchering animals or cutting wood or all of those kind of um, making fences and, and uh, craft building and, and all of those sorts of things which are part of the household daily life but also in, in terms of preparation for defence. One of the big things that we see and that we know about the um, earlier, particularly earlier types of um, Viking raids is that they would um, run into settlements, particularly on the coastlines, and grab one or two particularly younger people or women or whatever and, uh, and then take them and sell them as slaves, usually uh, in, in Constantinople and those kind of places. Uh, Ireland is another one, the Dublin slave markets are quite, quite a, a well-known thing. So um, people, this is something that was, was just a very, um, this was just something I believe that would have been a, a very sort of functional thing for everyone really to have. So. There we go guys, look I'm, I'm rating this as a, as I say, a 7 out of 10, I think this is a really good piece of kit, um, something I recommend is 
um, in, incorporated uh, in, into your um, your kit. Axes were not simply limited though to the Dark Ages. Axes um, we can see right through the whole medieval period and um, there's pictures and iconography of knights using axes like this. In fact Robert the Bruce loved his axes and also um, Richard the Lionheart or Richard the First uh, loved his axes too. Richard the uh, Lionheart is well known for having a huge double headed axe and, um, and he would use that in preference to, to a sword uh, from his horse. So axes absolutely are um, uh, a, a really big thing right throughout the, um, the whole sort of medieval period. Righto guys, please like, subscribe and share. I'll catch you in my next video.